I'm home. Hi, Dad. How's it? Uh-oh. Mr. Honeywell give you a bad time at the office again? Horrible. Dad, this has got to stop. I'm sick of seeing you come home like this. Hello. I'm home. Just once. For a great and welcome change, I'd like to see you come home like this. Hello, Margie. I'm home. How's the pride of the Albright clan? Feel like stepping high tonight? Get with it, old girl. I'm ready and raring. Oh, that's just peachy. Well, at least it's better than coming in all bent over like you're carrying the world on your back. Any man would be bent over with Mr. Honeywell always riding him. What's the current hassle with your esteemed employer? Oh, he's messing around with one of my deals as usual. I could clean it up in a day if he'd leave me alone, but with his help, it'll take weeks. Mm-hmm. Dad, I've been doing a lot of thinking about this situation lately, and I believe I've got the answer. Now, Margie, no. Something always happens when you get that gleam in your eye. I tell you, Dad, I've got the answer. Mr. Honeywell wouldn't be so fussy and picky around the office if he had another interest in life, i.e., and to wit, a woman. I won't listen. I just came home to pick up my briefcase, and I, I've got to go back to the office. Don't wait up for me, and whatever you do, don't do any more thinking. <laughs> Oh, Margie. Yes, and I wish you'd keep her mind occupied until I get back. Hi, Margie. What's with the Latin boy tonight? Dad? Oh, he's got a problem, and he won't listen to my solution. Mrs. Odette, would you do me a favor? Anything that's legal. But don't let that hold you up. Name it. Will you marry Mr. Honeywell? Me, marry old honey buckets. Please, Mrs. Odets. If Mr. Honeywell had a wife, he'd have some interest in life besides business. And then he'd be easier on Dad because he wouldn't spend so much time at the office. If he had a wife like me, he'd spend all his time at the office. Now, that's not true. You know you've got that certain something that attracts men. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but I've had it for an awful long time. Well, Mr. Honeywell's going to stop making Dad miserable, that's for sure. Because I'm going to get him a wife. Well, don't look at me. I wouldn't walk down the same aisle with that old goat even at a movie. You better try smuggling him into a Lonely Hearts Club. Lonely Hearts Club? Yeah. I heard of an outfit that sort of doubles as a card club and Cupid Roost. It's called the 400 Whist and Social Club. Nice, refined people. Most of them wealthy, too. Mrs. Odette, you're a darling. <laughs> no, just a smart cookie. If you don't raffle the old geezer off, I'm liable to get stuck with him myself. <laughs> <laughs> But with all his money, he's just a lonely old man who needs the love and companionship of a wife. Of course, we're not a marriage bureau, Miss Smith, did you say? But we have on occasion brought two lonely souls together to find happiness in one another. Then you will find him a wife? I shall see that he meets someone charming and suitable, and the rest will be up to Mr. Honeywell. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, I think I ought to warn you that he's not exactly perfect. After all, he's been a bachelor all his life, and he has some kind of, uh, well, weird tastes. Like, uh, he's crazy about tripe Newberg. Tripe Newberg? It's his own recipe. Instead of lobster, he uses tripe. Well, Miss Smith, 
Let me see what I can do. Oh, thank you, Mr. Kent. And you'll make sure Mr. Honeywell doesn't find out how all this happened, won't you? You have my word that neither Mr. Honeywell nor the lady shall know that this meeting has been arranged. This little secret shall be yours and mine. Thank you. Hello? Oh, hello, Raj. No, just having a late breakfast. Now, listen carefully, Annette. I think I found the nice fat pigeon we've been waiting for. The pin feathers are solid gold. Now, get dressed in your hunting clothes, my dear. You're going into action immediately. Betty, tell all right to stay here till I get back. Yes, Mr. Honeywell. Oh, and put the Chicago call through to the bank. Just ask for Mr. Honeywell. They'll know where to locate me. Better tell Albright to cancel any engagements. We're working tonight. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry, madam. I hope I didn't hurt you. Oh, that's quite all right. It was all my... Oh, I'm afraid I've turned my ankle. I'll take you in my office and call a doctor. Oh, I couldn't think of it. If you'd be kind enough to help me to a cab, I'll call my own physician when I reach my home. I'll do better than that. I'll drive you home. After all, it was my fault for being so clumsy. Well, if it wouldn't inconvenience you too much. There, Mrs. Gilmore. Are you sure you're all right? Oh, yes, Mr. Honeywell. Won't you sit down for a moment? I never would have made it alone. An attractive woman like you isn't alone very often, I'll wager. But I am alone. Quite alone. Just one of those wealthy, lonely widows the world is full of, unfortunately. Well, I should be running along, but perhaps I should stay until your doctor comes. You just might need someone to, uh... Do stay for a bit. But I really don't need a doctor. Goodness, I've left something on the stove. Do you smell it? Yes, I do, and by George, it smells familiar. Oh, no, I don't think so. It's a special dish I prepare myself, principally because I can't get it in any restaurant. You see, they have so few requests for tripe Newberg. Yeah. Tripe Newberg? Oh, no, I must be dreaming. Now, Mr. Honeywell, don't tell me you like tripe Newberg. Do I? Why, madam, it's a passion with me. I even have my own recipe, and I cook it myself, too. Well, that settles it. I can reward you in a small way for being so very kind to me. You will stay for dinner, won't you? Well, I really should go back to the office working with one of my staff. Please? Oh, it would do you good to forget work just this once and indulge yourself. Why don't you call your office and tell them you've been, uh, oh, detained is a nice word, and sufficiently vague. Mrs. Gilmore, with your persuasive qualities, you'd be a tremendous success in business. Where is your telephone? Right over there. Hi, Margie. I'm home. Oh, hi, Dad. How's the pride of the Albright clan? Feel like stepping high tonight? Well, get with it, old girl. I'm ready and raring. <laughs> well, that's more like it. What happened to cause all this gay madness, anyway? Sort of a minor miracle. You see, I was supposed to work with Mr. Honeywell tonight, but he called up and said he was having dinner with some woman. So I got the whole deal all cleaned up by myself. Must be some woman to take Mr. Honeywell away from business. <laughs> you can say that again. If you don't, I will. <laughs> he didn't make much sense when he called up on the phone tonight because he was so excited. Just a lot of jabber about a tripe dinner he was having in some gal's apartment. <laughs> Wouldn't it be wonderful if he married this woman and stayed away from the office every night? <laughs> <laughs> well, you've had your first miracle today. Would you like to try for two? <laughs> still can't believe it's really true. Ten days ago, I'd have sworn Mr. Honeywell would be a bachelor for the rest of his life. And now he's going to be married. Think of it. I'm going to thank Mr. Kent personally for getting me off the hook. The club ought to give him a bonus. Dad will, too, when I tell him how his miracle happened. Mr. Honeywell hasn't been near the office the whole ten days. And Dad's practically president of the firm. He will be when the old boy takes the fatal leap. <laughs> 
When to the funeral? <laughs> the wedding, I mean. <laughs> In three days. Dad says Mr. Honeywell's furious because the law makes him wait that long. <laughs> well, shall we go down and give Mr. Kent our grateful thanks? Let's go. <laughs> Aren't you going to congratulate me? In three days, I'll be Mrs. George Honeywell the first. You should congratulate me, my dear. I lined the sucker up, didn't I? That's Mr. Kent. Shh. Yes, I think you'll find this operation will be more successful than the little shakedown you were involved in in San Francisco a few years back. This time, I don't have to worry about the police. I'm going to marry our pigeon. All nice and proper. And after you've extracted all you can from the old gaffer, a quick divorce and we spend our declining years abroad on your alimony. Well, I'd better get out of here. It wouldn't do to have anyone connect you with the Honeywell financial disaster. Oh, you don't do me justice, my dear. Well, if anything goes wrong, I can swear under oath that I've never even laid eyes on Honeywell. I don't even know what he looks like. Well, you haven't missed anything, believe me. Don't you think we ought to go right to Honeywell and tell him the truth? Well, he's not in. And besides, I've got to tell Dad first. Maybe he can think of something. I got a rough idea what he's going to think when he finds out about little Margie playing Cupid. All right, I got some news tonight. Oh, hello, Margie and Mrs. Odette's. This is a pleasure. It won't be for long, Pigeon. What's that? Uh, she just means you're going to be married, and she takes a very dim view of the whole thing. Well, I don't. No, sir. Why, it's going to make a different man of me. That I'll go along with. Yes, ladies, it's a new life for George Honeywell, starting in three short days. A completely new life, because I'm going to retire from business. Retire? You mean Dad will be president of Honeywell and Todd if the marriage goes through? What do you mean, if it goes through? Mr. Honeywell, there's something I... Margie, I don't want you to get any false hopes about your father. It's true I'm retiring, but not the way you might think. As a matter of fact, I'm dissolving the firm of Honeywell and Todd. My little intended wants me to be free from business worries. In fact, she suggested I sell the firm. But, but, but what about Dad's job? Oh, no! I'll give your father a good reference and a full two weeks severance pay. Tell him to call me the minute he comes in. Steady, girl. But he can't do that. No, by golly, and he won't, because I'm going to tell him the truth about his little intended. Margie, use your head. You can't tell him now. But I've got to do something. Well, you may as well face it. You can't tell a man his bride's a crook without having any evidence to prove it. Evidence? All right, I'll get the evidence. Long distance, I want to make a person-to-person -person call to the chief of police in San Francisco. So, that brings you up to date, Dad. The San Francisco police are working on it, and they're going to call me just as soon as they get the dope on her. Mr. Honeywell will have to believe them. But Mr. Honeywell is getting married in three days. That's two days after the day, and the day is already shot. Then we're shot, too. All right, Margie. How about another one of your inspired ideas? There must be some way. And I think I found it. This Roger Kent's never seen Mr. Honeywell. We heard him say so, didn't we, Mrs. Odette's? All right, so he's never seen the old boy. So what? Well, if Annette thought she was in a jam, Mr. Kent's the first person she'd run to, right? Check. What you got cooking, Margie? Some hot water for the merry widow, if everything goes right. Will somebody tell me what's going on around here? Later, Dad. First, we've got to get Mr. Honeywell out of his apartment for a couple of hours. Hello? Oh, hello, Anna, dear. Yeah, this is your Snooksy. What's the matter with your voice? Has my little gift from heaven got a cold? Just a little one, dear. It's nothing. Now, listen carefully. Remember how you've wanted to elope instead of waiting for three long, dreary days? Well, Snooksy, I've decided. We're going to elope tonight. Elope? Why, Lammy Pie, that's wonderful. You know I will. What? Oh, I'll do better than that. I'll meet you at the airport right away. Oh, you've made me the happiest man in the world. Why, I feel 20 years younger. Bye, sweets.
All right, folks, that takes care of Mr. Honeywell. Now we've got just a couple of hours in which to save his romantic little neck. Come on. This is the place. Uh, Margie, don't you think you overdid the gray hair just a little? After all, Mrs. Odette, I mean Mrs. Honeywell, a daughter of yours shouldn't look like a teenager. <sighs> yeah, I guess being my daughter, you would have aged fast. <laughs> <laughs> now remember, let me do most of the talking. Okay. We would like to have a word with you on behalf of... Sorry, madam. I've already given my old clothes to a rummage sale. I told you that I we don't... We are not here for charity, Mrs. Gilmore. Come, mother. You should have saved some of those old clothes to wear. Now, just a moment. Who are you, anyway? I am Clarissa Honeywell, and this is my mother, Mrs. George Honeywell. How'd you do, darling? Mrs. Honeywell? You mean she's his wife? You catch on quick, darling. Why, I don't believe it. George told me himself that he was never married. Naturally, darling. But you can't believe a word Georgie says. He's always been so crooked, he could hide behind a corkscrew. <laughs> uh, well... I suppose he didn't tell you he has a grown daughter, either. No, he didn't, and I still don't believe it. You mean to tell me he was married to her? Why, she looks 20 years older than he does. Watch your language, darling, or I'll clobber you. I realize this must be a great shock to you, but then it was a shock to poor Mama when she discovered that Papa was going to marry you. Yes, darling, it sure was. You don't expect me to give my honeypot up after Clarissa and I have lived all these years on the Riviera on my alimony. Alimony? Then he must have divorced you. I thought so. Poor Papa. He thought he did. When he deserted us, he got a Mexican divorce, but it wasn't legal. Uh, Mama never said anything as long as the alimony came in on time. When she heard about you, we took the first plane out. We wouldn't want you to commit bigamy, would we? Bigamy? Yes, darling. And I think that's mighty bigamy, too. <laughs> I'm going to call Mr. Honeywell and see what he has to say about this. Mr. Honeywell isn't at home. Oh, he's home all right. He just won't answer the phone. Afraid to face you, I guess. Why should he be afraid to face me after facing her? Don't push your luck, darling. I am liable to flip my bonnet. We will return home now to be with dear Papa. If you wish to press this matter further, I suggest that you have your lawyer or some close friend contact Mr. Honeywell. Good night. Married? Honeywell married and has a daughter? Oh, calm down, Annette. Of course you're not going to commit bigamy. But there's something phony about this. They look the part all right. The wife looks like a Civil War relic, and the daughter looks old enough to be my mother. Besides, they're not afraid of an investigation because the daughter told me to have my lawyer contact Honeywell if I wanted to. She did, eh? Well, we'll do better than that. Your outraged brother is going to call on Mr. Honeywell right now. What? Yes, of course it'll work. Honeywell and I have never laid eyes on each other. The very least we can get out of this is a settlement of some sort. Yeah. I'll call you later. Mr. Honeywell? Oh, yes. Come in. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, well, uh, what can I do for you? Mr. Honeywell, my name is Roger Gilmore. I'm Annette's older brother. Perhaps you can tell me what you intend to do. Uh, come in and sit down. Uh, I want you to know that my intentions were honorable. I, I thought I was divorced years ago. 
Now, I don't want to hurt Annette, but uh, my wife and I have decided upon a reconciliation because of uh, uh, Clarissa, our daughter. And just exactly where does that leave my sister? <clears throat> uh, I intend to make some sort of a settlement. Uh, uh, that is, if you, uh, if you think that Annette wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be offended. If it will ease your conscience, sir, I think that Annette might consider it. <clears throat> uh, of course, uh, I will have to consult my wife and daughter. <clears throat> Uh, Clarissa, dear, bring Mother in, will you? You call Georgie Porgy. Uh, this is Mr. Gilmore. He has called regarding that uh, <clears throat> unpleasant situation with his sister. Uh, my wife, uh, my baby. How'd you do, darling? Too bad about Annette, but that's the way the ball bounces. Uh, he was afraid you might object to my making a settlement on Annette. Oh, give her a lump sum. She's got some lumps coming, if you ask me. <laughs> no, Mama. That woman has no legal claim to any of our money. But, Miss Honeywell, your father said... I don't care what Papa said. In this state, there is no such thing as breach of promise. So it won't do you any good to make trouble. Yep. Well, <laughs> I guess that settles it. Now, why don't you call your sister and tell her of our decision? Uh, the phone is right over there. I'll tell her, all right. But you'll find she won't accept this brush off so easily. Oh, now, don't. Don't get excited. I'll go out to the kitchen and mix you a drink. It'll uh, buck you up. Airport. Hello, babe. Women. Not me waiting around all the night. Stop yelling at it. Honeywell won't pay a dime, and that's that. Mrs. Odets, Margie. Really, Papa? You haven't fixed the drinks. Back to the kitchen. Something's up. I'll call you back. Let go of me, I said. All right, what are you doing in my apartment? What the Sam Hill is going on here? Now, Mr. Honeywell, be calm. This is done. Oh. Come on, Dad. Hurry with those drinks. Now, let me see. He went out there to mix a drink and came in there. No, oh, there. Oh, was it there? Well, here's your drink. Happy days. <laughs> I wonder who that can be. I don't know, but I'll bet it's you. We let him in the back way. What's going on here? I'm not sure, but whatever it is, it's nuts. Completely nuts. Brush me off, Willie. Where is Mr. Honeywell? Well, he's in there, I think. But look out, he may come through here any minute. Wait till I get my hands on Snooksy. Someone to see you, honeypot. And then where have you been? Your Snooksy was worried. Why, you double-crossing old goat? Well, as soon as he comes out of the ether, we'll tell him the operation was a complete success. Nice work, Doctor. Not even a scar on his bank book. <laughs> Well, Dad, for once you've got to admit one of my ideas worked beautifully. The police have closed Mr. Kent's so-called whist club, and you got your job back. Yes, but think of the jam we'd have been in if that call hadn't come through from San Francisco at the last minute. It just goes to show that heaven will always protect the working girl. Working girl? What do you work at besides getting me into trouble? Why, Dad, I've devoted myself to a lifetime career. Getting you out of the trouble I get you into. Well, <laughs> that's my little Margie. <laughs>